Welcome in everybody. We're going to get started at around six. Uh, hopefully at six if the, everybody shows up on time. I know Lee's been trying to do his 24-hour marathon. I don't know how that's going. I was going just going to ask if you had any update on that. I did. I went in to watch him, but I, I don't. I don't know what's happening. I guess he'll he'll let us know when he gets there. He might be hammered by the time he gets in here. <laughs> Twenty-four hour drinking and dripathon. Yeah. So what's the update right. on the farm? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm hoping these guys know something and they can bring us up to speed. I haven't checked it in the last bit. I know they were. It looked like they put the liquidity in for the dogs. And it looked like they put a shit ton of money in, too. Oh, yeah, shoot. I need to get the actual contract address for dogs. Didn't somebody put that in our telegram? I think. Mm, maybe. Guys, we're going to get started in a few minutes. We're waiting for a couple of people to join us. Yeah, it looks like it's still paused, so nothing yet. Oh, there's, there he is. I'm right to speak. Lee, I sent you an invite to speak. You should uh, find that somewhere. Hello, can you hear me now? Hey there, buddy. Hey, yep. Good evening, friends. How are we doing? You okay? Yeah, how are you? Oh, God. I'm 24-hour live streaming at the moment, and I've had some audio issues. We all know what that's like. Oh, yeah. How Too far many into audio this streams. Uh, I'm currently... Uh, was it 11 o'clock? So, uh, eight hours, maybe? <laughs> so you're a third of the way there. Yeah. And Drip Guide, I sent you an invite to speak. Should we let Haley co-host? <laughs> Let's take a vote. Only if I can ask her questions. Yeah. She's going to ask every third question. <laughs> uh, waiting on Scott, I think. He's never used this, so hopefully he gets it squared away, gets it sorted. Brandon, can you do a mic check for us? Brandon, if you're on a computer, you got to do it from a phone or we won't hear you. Oh, he's a listener. All right, hold on. I, oops. <laughs> uh, I'm Brandon, I'm sending you an invite to speak. So it should appear on your phone and then just click it and follow the prompts. <laughs> We're going to get you guys... Uh, and Haley's Haley didn't even accept it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "No, fuck you, Todd." <laughs> For fuck's sake! All right, let me just check, guys. We'll get started in a couple here. We're just having some technical issues. I'm only accepting this to tell you that I am not speaking. <laughs> Oh, now you're not speaking to us? Is that yes, what this is right about? Now. I told you. I, I got the kids in the car. We're doing... Are you going to air our dirty laundry in public and, and tell everyone the, you're not speaking to us? There's Yankees on. I can't, I can't do all the things, Tom. I can't do all the things today. But I'm, I am listening in. So I'm listening, but I'm not speaking, okay? But, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Be aware. <laughs> right? I'm going on mute. All, all right. Hey, Lee, I'm going to get started and we can we can start with you. And then as the guys come in, hopefully uh, we can we can get it going. Are you yeah. are you sort of you ready to talk? Yeah, I'm perfectly I'm, Wait, I'm that... ready to go. All right. Hold on. Haley, you got to mute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to kick her ass out. Of Don't here. kick oh, me Scott. out. Right, Sorry. So, Scott, <laughs> go back on mute. <laughs> we love you, Haley. <laughs> Scott, I just sent you an invitation to speak. So you should be getting that. And then Brandon, I think he's probably going to come on from a phone. Scott, do a mic check for us. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah welcome to Spaces, buddy. Perfect. It works. I was getting uh, I was getting duplicates. I was, I was hearing you guys two or three times. I had to reset some things. Check, check. Awesome. 
Yeah. All right. Everyone's here now. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, welcome in. We're doing a, a roundtable sort of super AMA. Um, if you guys could mute yourself um, and then I'll, you know, I'll call on you guys just so we don't have a lot of background noise. Um, so as you know, we had Lee, who's Dryptopian, come on last week and we did an AMA with him and that got me super excited about Drip and uh, as Haley likes to say, I'm now balls deep in Drip. I'm a big fan of it. I just keep buying more. And today, the Animal Farm is scheduled to open, and I wanted to have these guys come on and sort of give us, like, their game theory on how they're planning on making money and how to best play this so that you can make some money. So Brad and I are each going to give away $100 in drip tokens. So what we'll do is we're going to record this, and then we're going to put out the recording. We'll run it for a week. You can comment on that tweet I'll put out later on, and we'll pick a couple of winners from there. Has to be new people to drip. Uh, we'll send you the invite link once you create your wallet. We'll airdrop you 100 bucks and uh, get you started. So you, you got, you know, tune in, learn from the best about how to do it. So, Lee, can we start just with um, give us a quick overview of what drip is and then let us know what's going on with the animal farm today. Has it has it opened yet? What's happening there as well? Yeah, okay. So firstly, I'll start with the bad news. The Animal Farm has not launched. Um, there's, I'm not going to go into the, the contract that's caused the problem or the, the um, part of the website that's caused the problem. But basically, <clears throat> one element of the system that they're reporting over to the new UI has caused a delay in deploying all the, the contracts. However, the liquidity for the new token, the DOGS token, has been added. But to do it safely and and... I suppose, more diligently, they've decided to um, unpause tomorrow at 12 Eastern instead of today rather than rush the maintenance issue that's caused the, the slight delay. But it's, we've waited for months. Another 24 hours ain't really going to bother me, although I am 24-hour live streaming it, so it's put a little bit of, <laughs> a, little bit of a spanner in the works. But, yeah, um, tomorrow at 12 Eastern is when we're going to launch again. So that's how much, the how, much, how much liquidity was put in? I'm not 100 percent sure. Someone said around 40 million, 45 million. I, I, when I looked, yeah, it's 32. It's, it's almost 32 million in the AFD BUSD and over 12 million in the AFD BNB. Is that, cool. do, is that U.S. dollars? Yes. Okay. So is that? Did you just say a total of 48 million? Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> That's nothing. That's nothing compared to what you're going to say in this farm. Guys, if, <laughs> if, if, if you're listening in the audience and, and you know crypto, like you'll see token projects put in nothing near that for liquidity. And if they ever raise a million dollars or more, they'll put, you know, 400 grand in if at most. And the rest still will somehow disappear and end up in people's pockets. So $48 million just went into liquidity on the, that one pairing which is insane that that's just is insane um lee do me a favor give us a quick background on what is drip and actually you know what if you could all do that yeah like, like, a quick, like, a, like a quick elevator you know we're sitting in the pub we got a few minutes over a pint give us a quick what is drip i'd like to hear that from each each of you how, how you tell people about it so i muted myself my apologies yeah, so Drip is, long story short, Drip is a cryptocurrency token like any other. Can be bought, can be sold, um, subject to the taxes, which is um, no tax if you buy on the native decks, but there's always a 10% tax on selling. Now, you can use that cryptocurrency token, the Drip token, as, as I say, to buy and sell. But what the majority of us do is use a, um, a faucet, which is it's all water-themed. So basically, you would take, let's say, 100 drip tokens and you would stake it into the faucet. You would lose 10% going into the faucet, so your 100 would become 90. Then you would earn 1% a day <clears throat> excuse me, of your 90, which you can choose to either claim and sell, claim and hold in your wallet, or you can what we call hydrate, which is a, another term for compound or recompound. And then over time, you would build... I'm not going to go into all of it because we, we want to be quick. You, over time, you build up your balance by compounding. And then your 90 that you started with in 
365 days, you've been paid that 1% a day. And if you've compounded all the way through, there's different calculators you can use. Your balance will significantly, significantly increase due to the power of compound interest. And like I did as a new investor in February, I bought in, I staked it into the faucet, and ever since, I've been earning my 1% a day. And as of right now, if I just check my own personal faucet, I have 163 drip available, for instance, that I could claim and sell today for $1,000. And that's a couple of days' worth of drip that's been built up. So m the majority, obviously, you've also got team building aspects to it, referrals and invite links. But for me personally, the short story is I bought it, I staked it, I've earned my 1% a day, I've been a good player. I've hydrated, I've added new capital on dips, and now it's paying me out a significant amount of money that no bank in the United Kingdom or, in fact, the world could ever match. So it's, a, it's an easy contract. It's one that's been going for over 17, 18 months now, and it's still paying the exact same. It doesn't pay you out in dollars. It pays you out in drip. But as it stands today, my drip is worth, as I say, 1000 So that's the long. There is a lot more to it, but that's a short summary of the power of compound interest versus the price of a token and the faucet. Thanks. I appreciate that, Lee. Brandon, how do you uh, describe it to someone when you meet them? Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> Lee pointed out that uh, drip, in essence, is just a cryptocurrency. So it's very, very similar to Bitcoin. Uh, you can buy it. You can sell it. You can store it in a wallet. Uh, you can send it from here to there relatively quickly, a lot quicker and cheaper than Bitcoin. But speaking of Bitcoin, I like to point out the, the price history of Bitcoin, which was launched in, what, 2009 or so? And with Bitcoin, you had an opportunity, if you'd held the entire time, you had an opportunity to turn a dollar into $6.9 million dollars. Because Bitcoin went from a penny to $69,000 per coin at one time. But virtually no one on the face of the planet ever got that kind of return, except if somebody had literally held Bitcoin the entire time. So one of the things that Forex does is he designs products, financial, decentralized, trustless financial products that incentivize people to follow and engage in an optimal behavior, investment behavior. And so the best behavior for anybody to engage in with Bitcoin, and this is the ship has sailed on Bitcoin, right? But the best opportunity for someone to realize a life-changing gain was to hold on to that coin the entire time. And so with this simple cryptocurrency drip, it goes hand in hand with a smart contract called Faucet, which incentivizes two different things. Now, let me skip back. Why did the price of Bitcoin go from a penny to $69,000? That was largely a function of user adoption. That means it went from a handful of people on the whole planet that even knew it existed to being a household name that practically everyone on the planet has heard of Bitcoin. So that was a user adoption where more and more people got interested in the, in the coin and brought their capital and bid the price of Bitcoin up and up and up. So we need user adoption for a cryptocurrency to appreciate in value. And we need people to hold on to it and not sell it. And so that's what Fawcett does. Fawcett is, is a, is a staking contract although it's not a staking contract that you can withdraw from you can't withdraw the drip that you deposit into the faucet you can only withdraw your one percent daily interest like lee was talking about so the idea with faucet is you don't have to but the faucet smart contract incentivizes you to hold the token for a longer period of time than you otherwise would. And it also incentivizes user adoption because it has a referral reward system. So if I'm in Faucet and I tell my friend to also get into Faucet, they use my address as their buddy and I earn a reward. 
When they make a deposit in the faucet, I get a little reward, and that adds to my deposit. And when they hydrate their bag, they click the hydrate button. I like to call it the hodl button. You have your certain available amount of drip every day that you could you could claim that. You could claim it out to your wallet. You're going to pay a 10% tax. You could claim it, sell it, and, and get some BNB or get some dollars. Or you could hit the hydrate button or the hodl button. You can say, no, I, I'm not going to claim this. I'm going to hodl for another day. And so your deposit grows, in, and you give, you give the platform another day to grow in user adoption. And for all the people that you brought in, to find more people to bring in and the whole thing grows. And it's a little bit, I would say that with the drip token, it's a, it, people look at the price chart of drip and they go, Oh heck no. Cause I, I'll be honest, th this year's price chart for drip, although it is still higher today than it was at launch back on April 22nd, 2021, the price of drip is higher than it was back on launch. But if you look at this year's, Price chart for 2022, it looks like death. But what people don't realize is that during the entire year, you were getting 1% of your deposit per day, which when you compound that 1% every single day for an entire year, you're going to multiply your deposit by 31 and a half X. So if your deposit starts at 100 drip and you hydrate every day for a year, at the end of the year, you now have... Uh, 3,153 drip in your deposit. It's a little bit misleading because you can't withdraw that, but now you're getting 31 and a half drip per day that you can claim as opposed to that one drip a day that you got when you started with your 100 drip. So you're incentivized to hodl. You're incentivized to spread the word and increase user adoption, which is helpful for any cryptocurrency. Drip included, Bitcoin included. And you can get yourself into a position where you have a significant daily income that you can use to pay your bills or even like I did, I retired early, way early. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. Uh, Scott? Yeah, I'll just try it. Since those guys were so thorough, I'll just give like the one minute pitch. But um, basically, drip to drip, and really the faucet is when we talk about drip, we're really mostly talking about the faucet. Drip is a uh, cryptocurrency. The faucet is a smart contract that actually makes you money. So that's the interesting part. And for new investors, that's the part that's going to entice them. So the so drip basically is a daily ROI platform. You invest money; it pays you a percentage of that money per day. And then you can compound that over time. So it acts a little bit like a certificate of deposit, a little bit like bonds. Um, you Once you put your money in, that initial principle is locked and it drips you back 1% of that per day up to 365 days. So if you put in $1,000, that would pay you, if all you did was pull money from it, it would pay you uh, $3,250 over time, if that makes sense. So, uh, or $3,650 over time right? One year, 1% a day for a year. Now the magic happens, like Brandon said, when you take that money that you've earned and redeposit it. So let's say the average investor throws in a $1,000. Uh, at that current USD rate, they'd earn 1% per day, which means they make $10 a day. Now they have the option to either take that money out and sell it and use it for whatever they want, or the option to reinvest it. Then they're now making 1% on $1,010 per day and so on. So like like he said, if this goes on for a year and you just continue to compound by doing uh, good behavior and delaying your gratification, you've now used the power of compounding gains to increase your, uh, you know, your deposit balance up to like more than 30x. So you've increased it by a ton. So it's really just about delaying gratification. It's going to pay you 1% per day of whatever your current deposits are. 
you have the choice if you want to take the money and go and and you know reach uh, realize those short term gains if you want, or you can recompound that money now be earning one percent on that total and continue continue to grow your balance. Now, of course, there's a max payout. This can't go on forever because people would be making billions of dollars. Um, that maxes out at a hundred thousand tokens or you know uh, three hundred and sixty five percent. So there is a, there is a max payout, and for most people, they're going to reach that in between depending on you know the deposit between one and maybe two and a half years just depending on how large their deposit is but it is uh, again just a daily roi protocol you put money in it drips you back a portion of that per day and as long as you keep compounding that then you can grow that into a pretty sizable uh, stack wealth wise and, and you i don't know if you really touched upon uh, and anyone can answer this that they want but the price is down as, as you did touch upon that but with the farm coming back on, one would suppose, based on historical data, that the price of the drip token is going to go up. So even if you're getting one or two drip tokens, today might be worth $10, but could be worth a hell of a lot more once the farm is turned back on. Um, can we talk about that just real quick, whoever wants to cover that, like what happened, why the farm was turned off or paused and what that did to the price and what we think is going to happen once it's unpaused. I'd like to uh, to touch on that a little bit. But b- before I get to that, I, I you bring up a very good point. And, and Scott was mentioning, you know, put $1,000 in and you get $10 a day. And that's true, but it's important. I don't want anybody to be misled uh, with Drip and with Faucet. So you do earn 365% ROI on whatever you deposit and whatever you add to your deposit, but that is paid out in drip tokens. And so that is that that is the variable. You you are going to make 31x in drip over the course of a year, but the unknown is what is the value of those drip tokens in the future? So that's important to know and people need to understand, yeah, you're getting a 1%, but you're getting 1% per day in drip now is that drip token worth ten dollars or is it worth five dollars or whatever you don't know you don't know what that's going to be in the future now that being said we should see uh we probably will see a pump in the price of drip as the animal farm goes into effect because one of the primary attractive features of Animal Farm is the pig token. And one of the main ways for you to earn pigs token is to farm drip BUSD. So that's a that's an incredible incentive for people to buy drip and pair it with BUSD and provide that drip BUSD liquidity. Then they can take those LP tokens and stake those on the Animal Farm. And guess what? They get to earn free pigs tokens that they can now increase their share ownership of the platform. And that's, I mean, that's a whole other topic to talk about the animal farm and how it's an opportunity for ownership of a decentralized um, yield farm, which is incredible. But we should see a pump based on people wanting to get into the drip BUSD farm. We should see another pump a little bit later this year, probably when we get the new user interface for drip. Uh, we should see another pump associated with the, there's going to be a layer two product on top of Faucet that's going to incentivize people to add more deposits into Faucet. So that'll that'll be bullish for the price of Drip. And then what I'm most excited about with respect to Drip is the upcoming um, Scratchy platform. And so any of these scratchy tickets that are sold on the Drip website, 15% of those, 15% of that ticket sales revenue is going to go directly into Drip. It's going to purchase Drip off of the market and, and, and deposit all of those Drip tokens into the vault, the Drip vault, which is the, the back end of the faucet. So let's talk about for a second, if we could, how does the farm make money? All of that liquidity, where is all of that? Li- I know the answer, but I'd like you guys to cover it. Where does all that liquidity go and, and how is it making money? Well, so <clears throat> with DeFi, we're, we're trying to take over legacy centralized financial systems Right. Finance is the biggest industry on Earth. It's even bigger than oil. 
right? So one of the biggest financial, one of the biggest parts of the financial industry is, is trading, exchanges, stock exchanges. Everybody's heard of New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, the CME, right? So trading happens on, on a market in, in some kind of an exchange. So what we're doing in DeFi is we're replacing that centralized legacy exchange model with a decentralized exchange. And this really didn't get started until um, Uniswap on Ethereum mainnet, and then we have PancakeSwap on Binance Smart Chain. So these decentralized exchanges um, facilitate trade between two tokens. In its simplest form, it's a liquidity pool. It's a, I describe it as literally like a bowl full of tokens, and you've got token A and token B, and people in a decentralized, trustless way, they can exchange token A for token B or swap token B for token A. And there's no centralized party. There's no company. There's no CEO. There's no board of directors and all of that. that are Because when people are trading on the stock exchange, everybody's losing money or making money. But really who's making money on every single trade is the brokerages and the exchange itself. And so DeFi is replacing that with a decentralized model where the users get to make the money. So the, the, the real source of money in, in this system is the decentralized exchange. And in particular, what we're talking about is all the different um, liquidity pools that are part of the PancakeSwap platform. The difference between PancakeSwap and Animal Farm, though, is that PancakeSwap is owned by the developers of PancakeSwap. In the case of Animal Farm, the Animal Farm is owned by the pig pen. So you buy pigs tokens, you stake them in the pig pen. You are now, congratulations, a partial owner of this platform. Now, is some of that liquidity that's being that's being put in the farm is that going towards the liquidity pools in Pancake Swap, and that's where how, how we're making money? Well, all of the liquidity is in the Pancake Swap liquidity pools. Okay. So, what happens when when you provide liquidity to one of these decentralized exchanges or dexes? You provide some of token A and some of token B. Right. And you literally send those tokens to the liquidity pool contract. And that is a pancake swap contract. OK, when you do that, you get a claim check. So, you now own you provided a certain percentage of that liquidity pool. You you, you own a little percentage of that liquidity pool. And so you get a claim check for that percentage, and it's called an LP token, which is a liquidity provider token. So then what, what Animal Farm does is you take those LP tokens, so you go and you provide some liquidity, and I provided some liquidity the other day for the BNB BUSD pool on PancakeSwap, and then I did some Link BNB, and then I did some USDT, US, uh, USDT, BUSD. Anyway, I got all these LP tokens, right? And so now, as soon as the animal farm opens up, which I'm just learning, I guess, is going to happen tomorrow. Um, anyway, I'm going to stake those LP tokens. The LP tokens is what gets staked on the animal farm, not the liquidity itself. You're providing liquidity to the pancake swap liquidity pools, and then you're getting those claim check LP tokens, and then you're taking those LP tokens and staking them on the animal farm. So I can't go into onto the animal far, farm and stake BUSD and drip. You can stake the LP token when you, that you got when you provided that liquidity, but you can't, you can't see animal farm, at least not yet. Animal farm doesn't have DEXs. PancakeSwap has the DEXs, and there's, there's, I think there's hundreds of them, right? There's, there's, because each pool only covers token A and token B, right? Whatever that is. So there's a bunch of different pools on PancakeSwap, and so you can go to PancakeSwap and provide whatever liquidity you want to provide, get your little LP tokens. 
I call it a claim check because you can take those LP tokens at some point in the future and you can turn those back in. They don't really have any monetary value themselves. They, it's like a paper claim check. You take your suit to the dry cleaner and you give them the valuable suit and they give you a almost worthless little piece of paper. It's just a claim check. Same thing with an LP token. So you, you provide liquidity, you get your claim checks, you get your LPs, and then you stake those LPs on Animal Farm. Okay. We can get into the yield rehypothecation, which is uh, even more complex, but that's, that's the basics of it. So the first step we have to do is we have to go to Pancake Swap, and we have to set up, in this case, Drip BUSD pairing. I'll get my LP tokens. Then I go to the Animal Farm tomorrow, and I can stake those. Yeah. Okay. Brad, do you have any questions on no, that? It, I know this is it, getting into your territory. No, no specific questions at the moment. I'm just fascinated as I'm listening. I'm, I'm taking notes diligently over here. I'm writing down what my steps are. I can't wait till we talk a little bit more about strategy. And, and by the way, you just mentioned Drip BUSD. Drip BUSD, uh, yes, you're correct. You could go to Pancake Swap and provide that liquidity. Um, but really, if you want to provide drip BUSD liquidity specifically, it's better to use the um, uh, the special contract that Forex developed, which is called drip liberation, because specifically with the drip token, there's always a 10% tax whenever you send the token from here to there. Uh, and that includes sending the drip into the liquidity pool on PancakeSwap. But the drip liberation contract avoids that. And I always call it, it's like one-stop shopping. So you can put in an amount of BUSD or BNB or ETH or whatever you have on your, in your Binance Smart Chain wallet. You can put that into the drip liberation contract and the contract takes care of everything. It takes half your money and buys drip with it. It takes the other half and converts it to BUSD uh, if necessary. And then it takes the drip and the BUSD and puts it into the pancake swap uh, liquidity pool for you without the 10% tax. And then it gives you, it spits back the LP tokens into your wallet. How do we do that? Where do we go to do that? Uh, Animalfarm.app. And then uh, that was that was the the um, contract that they were having to do some stuff with today that caused the delay apparently. But um, yeah, on animalfarm.app, you go. I think it's the liquidity tab, and then uh, drip liberation. I think okay. that'll take you to the old site. So I guess but, my yeah. so I guess the I guess my point is we can go and do this all on Animal Farm and then sort of a one stop shop for Drip BUSD yes okay for for any of the other um, pairs uh, no you 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 would provide liquidity directly on the PancakeSwap dot finance website. Gotcha. All right, cool. All right, let's let's talk let's talk about uh, game theory if we could, um, and I'll and I'll bring the other guys in here too. You know, Lee or Scott, if you want to join us on this one. But let's talk about gaming. Like, how are you guys? What is your game theory for this? Is it just putting drip in the faucet? Is it doing liquidity? Um, Lee, what is it? How are you doing this? What, what's your plan? Yeah. So obviously. <clears throat> just just quickly, Brandon is such an expert in all of this. He's such an educational streamer. I just want to thank him for, for taking over for a little bit because I was sitting here thinking, yep, Brandon's right again. But yeah, um, when it comes to the animal farm and the faucet, firstly, for me as an investor, um, when I first started, the faucet was the place where I learned about the Forex ecosystem. Because there's a lot, there's a lot. To, it's it's simple, but when you really dig into game theory, you know you could talk about it forever on on a number of projects. So for me, the foundation was always the faucet, because that was the place where I learned, and that was where I went to school. So when I when I graduated, I started looking into the animal farm because it was a forex shark ecosystem. So for me, the animal farm is a place where, uh, as Brandon said, 
I can have ownership of part of the farm. And the game theory is that you want to own as much of the farm as you can to, in, in turn, accept more dividends. If I own 10%, I'm going to get more than someone that owns 1%. So I tried to keep it simple, and I'll try and do the same, you know, because it can it can get in depth. But for me, what I am doing is you've got for, um, farms and pools. Now pools are single asset staking pools, where I can stake uh, the dogs token, which I'll be able to do tomorrow. I can stake BNB, BUSD, ETH, Bitcoin, Binance version, Cake, etc. Now those are typically lower APRs because they are. They don't suffer from impermanent loss. Now, those that don't know what impermanent loss is, maybe you need to research it. But in short, because I'm not pairing up a volatile asset with a stable coin, the BUSD is pegged to $1. So I'm, I'm happy to just, you know, if I've got 5,000 BUSD, I can just pop it into the pools and that will passively earn me dogs tokens. The dogs then I can use in other parts of the farm to, to yield me pigs and then my ownership of the farm goes up and up so obviously not wanting to, to confuse people the farms is where you will pair up for instance um there's three core farms and a core farm is where um we can stake dogs paired up with busd dogs paired with bmb or drip paired with busd now all of the core farms will pay me out in pigs Currently, pigs are $121, and I can then take those pigs and put them in the pig pen, which will pay me a dividend in BUSD based on all of the taxes and stuff in the farm. So technically, the more pigs I own and stake, the more BUSD I can, I can take out. Now, there are other non-core farms, and those non-core farms will pay you in dogs. And I like to think of the, the dogs in the farm as workers. So you've got dogs and pigs. Pigs are the ownership. Dogs run around working, earning your pigs and earning your BNB and stuff like that. So game game theory wise, and I know this might sound very difficult to some people, but if you open up the website, animalfarm.app, and literally go across the top, you'll see all the tabs, and it makes much more sense if you just familiarize yourself with the website. But for me personally, I am looking tomorrow to buy dogs, stake my dogs, and we'll talk about the 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 next part of the staking dogs uh, shortly but very quickly i i want as many pigs as i can get which means i'll get passive busd and in turn if i'm earning busd passively every day i haven't got to sell one single asset because we've talked about it before you know if i've got 10 houses i don't just want to sell 10 houses i want to rent all 10 out and earn the rent every single day so i earn money while asleep if I just realise quick gains, then that's it then. Once I've spent that money, it's gone. And the same applies for me with the farm. It's about earning my dogs, earning my pigs, and making sure that I don't have to sell a native asset. Because for me, passive income and not having to sell these assets is, is what I'm going to realise the wealth, uh, the riches in the future um, for doing that. So I would suggest anyone look at the site. You can see it's quite easy when you look at it, but obviously explaining it to you is, is uh, coming across maybe difficult. But the game for me is earning passive income. And the only way to do that for me is by going into the farms, staking and earning these passive tokens that are going to give me BUSD. And is it accurate to say that when you own the pigs and you put them in uh, the pig pen, that's paying you a percentage of the entire ecosystem or, or the ecosystem of the farm? Is that accurate? But the transactions that happen on the farm, yes. Okay. So that that's a good thing to have a piece of, I, I would assume. That that should be one of the goals. For sure. And I think that's how they're pitching it, is you can actually own a piece of a decentralized exchange. I mean, I think when Forex set this up, um, he knows that the traditional wealthy elites, they, the, the owners, the owners of platforms, the owners of real estate, the owners of businesses, they typically make all the money. And uh, in the traditional banking system, of course, that's extra true. So in this scenario, he's created something and then allowed um, allowed all the community members, similar to the story of the animal farm, to actually purchase a stake in it, have ownership. That way they, um, you know, they're more productive. It's the, the whole theory behind the animal farm, just because people are probably confused. Like, why are they talking about dogs or pigs? 
uh, you know, the, the owner of the farm was, you know, sort of abusive to the animals. And of course they were doing all the work and all the, uh, all the yields were going to the, to the farmer or the owner of the farm. Eventually the animals took over the farm and because they took it over, they now had a new sense of ownership. They were more productive. And so it just goes along with that game theory in that we, the little people can now own a piece of a decentralized exchange and, and it all comes out and, you know, these dogs, pigs and everything. So, well, it sounds a little bit confusing it's all just related to that and i think if you understand that story then it's a little bit easier to, to digest but the the you know the game theory for me is is actually relatively simple i just break it down into a few sections pigs are the ownership that you have in the, in the platform so i obviously want to own a piece of a decentralized exchange so my role is to try and buy as many pigs as possible it doesn't matter what uh, what uh, price i buy the pigs at the the, the price doesn't necessarily matter what matters is how many of those pigs I have staked in the pig pen. And that amount of pigs is what decides my percentage of the overall, you know, farm yields. So all the transactions that are happening on the farm, I'm getting a small sliver of that in proportion to how many pigs I have overall that are staked in the pig pen. So the, the main game theory for me is I want to own as much of this farm as possible. So everyone who's out there doing those transactions, or they're paying me because I, I'm the owner of the decentralized exchange. So uh, I'm buying as many pigs as possible and staking them in the pig pen. Now, the reward for that, how you actually get paid those dividends is through BUSD, which, of course, we know as a stable coin and, you know, the largest, uh, you know, Binance, one of the largest Third, third largest cryptocurrency on the planet is a, a very good choice. So I'm happy to be paid in digital dollars in, in BUSD for my ownership of the farm. Then you've got other sections of the farm. So that's just, that's the, that's really my, the main purpose for me, for the pigs. And that's the uh, purpose of the pig pen is my ownership. But I also would like to make, you know, some other money. And um, in this case, I'm going to do a lot of that through the dog pound. If I stake dogs, those dogs will earn me BNB. BNB is obviously used for gas fees. You can use to purchase other cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of use for that. So for me, that, that um, two-tiered approach, if I've got pigs and they're earning me BUSD, then I can either uh, utilize those uh, gains to maybe buy more pigs or something else or spend it if I want to. And then if I'm getting a BNB through the dog pound, then I've got gas fees and everything. I don't. The ecosystem is kind of supporting my investment vehicle here. So in addition to those two, so that that's, you know, that my theory is, uh, of course, major position in the pig pen, if I can do that, and I'll utilize the drip contract to do that. That's gaining me wealth. I'm shifting it over here for more of a long-term ship strategy. And then the dog pound, obviously earning me BNB. And then the farms uh, in themselves is just a way to stake other assets that you maybe would like to hold so you can generate additional income. So I'm bullish on Ethereum, for example. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm bullish on some of these other tokens. If I want to hold those tokens anyway, why would I not stake them over here on the farms to earn some additional yield? And in some of those, it's pigs. Some of those, it's dogs. So I could either sell those if I want to. Or I can keep compounding on my other positions and earn more BUSD and more BNB. So for me, it's just a, it's that basically three tiered approach. I want ownership in the platform, so I own pigs and I get paid BUSD, which is great for me. I own dogs and put them in the dog pound because I want BNB uh, to cover my gas fees and, and help me operate, you know, my crypto empire, if you will. And then I utilize the farms <clears throat> because I'm bullish on other tokens out there in the crypto world, and why not own them? keep them safe, stake them, and earn additional tokens that I can use in, you know, in, in the rest of the farm or sell if I feel like I need some additional capital. So when you, when you break it down into those sections, I think it's a little bit easier for people to digest and understand. Uh, you just, they're, they're a tool. Each one is a tool to produce a certain outcome. Sometimes that outcome is BUSD. Sometimes it's BNB. You know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, one of these other, uh, uh, liquidity pairs, but but you utilize those tools in the ecosystem to earn you more money. And if you have a long term outlook on it, you don't want to sell the asset. You just want to live off the dividends. Very similar to a rental property, like Lee said. If you buy a uh, rental property and and you fix it up and you flip it, you get that one time capital gain, right? But you got to pay the capital gains tax, and it's just a it's just a one time injection of capital. Now, if you hold that asset and just rent it out, then you basically get ongoing uh, passive income forever until you decide to sell the asset. I, I just a couple of comments. First of all, 
I, you're all incredibly well spoken and and very thoughtful in how you present this. Um, and and I, I'm so happy right now that we're doing this. And I really feel like this is going to be a recording that people are going to go back to and listen to and refer people to and say, listen, just go listen to this because they're going to break it all down for you. And so I, I just want to say, guys, well done. I'm loving this. Um, Brandon, if yeah, you could. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was, was going to have, have you jump in. <laughs> Along those lines, I, I realized uh, myself and, and Lee and Scott, we're, we're kind of giving you the fire hose treatment right now. And there's, there's uh, tons of information um, to talk about here. There's so many layers to this onion to peel back. Um, and so I would just like to mention that all three of us uh, do run channels on YouTube. Um, and I personally, I do three live streams every single week, Monday and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Of course, it's on YouTube. Of course, it's completely free. And my focus is is to be the uh, you know source of information and education on anything having to do with crypto in general, DeFi in general, and then specifically all of these uh, DeFi products that we have with Forex Shark. Being right now, for at least at least for now, we have Drip and we have Animal Farm. So. Uh, I, I realize there's a ton of information here, and, and so I just would encourage people to tune in for my live streams or tune in for uh, Scott and Lee's live streams or our videos. Um, there's a ton of information there, and we're also answering questions live in these live streams as well. So just wanted to put that out there. And I, in terms of game theory, um, everything that Lee and Scott has said is, is 100% on point. Um, and it goes back a little bit to what I was saying earlier about how Forex designs DeFi products that incentivize the user to in, manage their investments optimally. And in the case of Animal Farm specifically, where the strategy is to accumulate accumulate assets and hang on to those assets, accumulate, buy, but don't sell. And not just any assets, but assets that produce a passive income. And th this is a strategy utilized for many, many, many years, decades or centuries, perhaps, for people to build wealth. You accumulate assets, you don't sell them. You just accumulate more and you live off of the dividends. So that's what the animal farm is really um, incentivized and set up and designed to get you to do. So it, it, it almost forces your hand. Without forcing your hand, it almost forces your hand to manage your investment the right way, the best way, the most optimal way. So that being said, in terms of game theory, uh, sometimes I say drip, get rich, animal farm, stay rich. And the reason I say that is because with drip, you really have a, a dramatic asymmetric risk versus reward opportunity. You are making a risky investment. Let's not, let's not mislead anybody. There is definitely risk here. Like I spoke about before, there is price risk. You don't know the future value of the drip token. But what you do know is you're going to get that 365% ROI paid out in drip, 1% a day. And if you compound that every day for a year, guess what? 3,150% ROI in a year. That's amazing. If the drip token went down in value, okay, you might still be ahead. If the drip token stayed the same value, you're way ahead. If the drip token appreciated in value, icing on the cake life-changing life -changing, uh, opportunity, right? So there's an asymmetry. You can risk a relatively small amount of money. And I, I encourage people to use the mindset of this is complete flip of the coin gamble. I might lose it all. I might change my life and be able to retire 10 years early. So that's the asymmetry. You can risk a small amount of money. It might turn into a huge amount of money and completely change your life. It might not. It's a risk. It's a gamble. 
Animal Farm, on the other hand, uh, I feel like the whales in the crypto space could be perfectly fine dropping $10 million, $20 million into the system, and they're good to go. And I like what Scott mentioned, and I mentioned this myself on the stream tonight, is it, if you're a fan of Ethereum or you're a fan of Bitcoin uh, uh, or whatever cryptocurrency you're holding, why let that currency sit in a wallet earning no yield? And worse, why would you put that currency into a centralized uh, platform like a Celsius and risk your entire bag? So instead... You can take that cryptocurrency that you love, that you believe in, that you that you want to hold, hodl. You want to hodl it for years to come, right? So stake it on the animal farm and earn a a trustless yield off of it. You're gonna earn dogs, and I'm particularly excited about uh, earning the dogs. I'm not one of these guys that's gonna try to um, deal with the massive volatility and try to buy the dogs token on launch day. No, I'm going to stake a whole bunch of like those LP tokens I was talking about earlier. I'm going to stake all those assets and I'm going to use the animal farm the way it was designed to be used because I want those dogs tokens. I think the dogs token, not typical at all in terms of a reward token. Okay, so a reward token is inflated. It's literally minted. Every time you earn rewards on a, a platform, for example, PancakeSwap, you earn cake. You stake some assets on PancakeSwap, they pay you cake tokens. How do they do that? They mint those tokens into existence. It's almost like a hot potato, and that's the way people treat it. As soon as they earn some cake, boom, they sell it for something like BUSD. They, that's how they profit. Dogs is completely different. You don't want to sell because when you first earn dogs, there's a built-in sort of a vesting type of model to the dog's token where if you sell it right away, you're going to pay a 90% tax. Obviously, you don't want to do that. Instead, you're going to stake those dog's tokens in the dog pound and earn a different token. What are you going to earn in the dog pound? You're going to earn BNB. That's more of your cash token. And so again, this is an opportunity to accumulate these income producing assets and you don't sell them. You don't sell your pigs, you accumulate more. You don't sell your dogs, you accumulate more. You get a income, you get BUSD, you get BNB. That's your cash. That's what you use to pay your bills and, and live off of, all the while accumulating more and more and more assets and a greater share ownership of the platform. I was listening to um, Forage Shark with Travelad yesterday, and he mentioned non-custodial lending. Now, when he says that, are you referring to like the example you just gave us where you've got some Bitcoin sitting in your wallet? Instead of putting it into a central exchange, you're, use, you're putting it in the farm. So essentially, you still have control over that token, but you're earning passive income on it. Is that what he's referring to? Yes, absolutely. So Celsius... Um, I don't, I don't stay too up to date like on all the current crypto news and all that. I'm busy enough with my channel and, and, and all my positions and whatnot. But Celsius is the one that like crashed and burned, right? Didn't people lose millions of dollars? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, and, and Richard, I'm a huge fan of Richard Hart. And he, he'll, he'll say uh, it's like picking up nickels in front of a freight train. So, in order to earn a yield from Celsius or some other centralized um, platform, you literally have to send your Bitcoins to that platform. And if they have some kind of issue and they go bankrupt like Celsius did or whatever happened to them, you lose your whole bag. So instead, you can bridge your assets now, these assets that we're talking about, they exist on different networks. You have the Binance Smart Chain, but you also have the Bitcoin network, which is where Bitcoin lives. And you have, have the Ethereum mainnet, which is where ETH lives. But you can bridge these assets over to a different network. Um, 
And so with Bitcoin, you can literally bridge your Bitcoin over to the Binance Smart Chain network, and then it becomes what they call wrapped Bitcoin. So it's still it's still a Bitcoin. It trades on, on the exchanges on the Binance Smart Chain, but it is now a wrapped Bitcoin or a wrapped ETH or a wrapped link or whatever. Um, so you can do that with your coins, and they are still your coins. They're just on a different network, but you are the only one that has possession of those coins because, because they're still in your wallet, and you're the only one with the private key for that account. Right. So what you can do with the, with with Animal Farm is you can you can bridge your Bitcoin, you can bridge your ETH, you can bridge your link um, over to the Binance Smart Chain. It's in your it's in your wallets now on the Binance Smart Chain and you stake it on the Animal Farm uh, platform. You're the only one that can do anything with that. It's a trustless, decentralized smart contract. It's called a master chef contract. You can deposit those coins or tokens. You can, you're the only one that can withdraw them. Forex can't get to them. Nobody can get to them. As long as the Binance smart chain continues to function, that smart contract, which is just software installed on the blockchain, will do its job. And you're the only one with custodial access to those coins. So that's a better way. Rather than sending your coins to some company just keep your coins and just stake them. And you're the only one that can withdraw that back. Which is huge. So thank you for, thank you for explaining that. I just want to remind people that if you're new to drip, I encourage you to get some drip, put it in the faucet, start to play around because it's like driving. You can't read about it. You have to eventually get in the car and put it in drive and, and start playing around and, you know, pedal to the metal kind of thing. So with Drip, you have to do the same thing, in my opinion. And this recording, come back to it in the future, because there's some gold in here. And as you learn, you're going to want to come back to this and listen to it, and it'll make sense. I've only been doing this for about a week, guys. I'm brand new to this. Um, I love this system. I've already got six team members, and I am having the time of my life. And I really thank Lee for spending a weekend, you know, going back and forth with me to explain all of this. And I'm now, as Haley likes to say, balls deep in this project. <laughs> and we'll be doing everything within the farm that you guys are talking about. So I encourage people to, if this isn't sinking in, don't worry about it, but, but save this and come back to it. Because I, I know Brad is sitting there taking notes as I am. Uh, Brad, I'm going to actually bring you up and see if you want to ask any questions because I, I, I don't want to dominate the whole conversation. No, you're good. You're not dominating. I mean, you're doing most of the talking. I'm doing most of the writing here. So I, I appreciate this. And, and guys, I just wanted to say as well, I really appreciate all the information and education you're giving to us and everybody that's listening right now and everybody that will listen down the road as well. This is all incredibly valuable information. Um so I, I guess I had a, a couple of just random questions that I'm going to throw out there for you guys. So if if I decide to stake pigs or, or dogs, put them in the pig pen, the dog pound, is it the same as when I put drip into the faucet? I can never take those pieces back out, or can you take your pigs out, unstake your pigs or dogs at, at some point at a later time? You actually, it's the opposite. You do not lose those, and they're not necessarily locked. Um, there is there is a holding period on pigs where you get 2% out a day. So if you put 100 pigs in there, if you wanted to take those out, you could wait uh, 50 days, and you'd be able to take 100% of that asset out. So you don't, those, uh, I guess, those deposits aren't burned in a way like they are with TRIP. Not necessarily burned, but they're not locked in the same way. Okay, perfect. And then as far as actually, you know what, that question already got Yeah, just answered. to add to that as well, Brad, just just so you know that Scott's absolutely right. There are, there are um, in the farms and the pools, when you stake your LPs or you stake your single assets, those also aren't locked. So you're not, you're not like TVL and you're not total value locking any of your, your capital. 
there is like a mini lockup period of where you can unstate within four hours and stuff like that. But in the main, they are not locked away for you know the, the, that you don't just earn yield on them and they're locked. You can take your capital out at any time. So people need to know that's quite important. Brad, I'm just going to ask you a quick question that kind of pertains to this before you go on. Is 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 there an invite link for the farm, or is is that there's nothing like that in place? There is an invite link for the farm. Yes, um, there is. If you go to, yeah, if you go to the animal farm, sorry, animal farm dot app, and then launch the DAP. Yep. If you go to farms, and there's someone else I want to say before I, before I, um, get too far. But if you go down to farms, scroll all the way past the assets, you'll see copy referral link as a green tab. And that will store a cookie on your device and then people can use your referral link if they want to enter the farms. Now, before I um, move on or the lads move on, there is part of the farm called the Drip Garden. Now, this is rarely touched on because we it is part of the animal farm, but it's basically a, a, a very, very advanced miner where the, the token that you put in is Drip BUSD. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the token that you take out He's also drip BUSD. But what I wanted to say that when you if you if people see that on the farm and you do enter into that contract, that is TVL. That is locked. Um, what you put in is locked, and then you will receive up to three percent a day, depending on the decay. But I'm not going to go into the drip garden. That is a whole AMA on its own. But it's important because it's on the Animal Farm website. The drip garden is locked TVL, whereas everything else is not, apart from the pig pen that Scott said you can. Um, withdraw 2% today or wait 50 days and take everything out. So it's important to note. Now, Lee, is there a separate invite link that you have to send me in order to do the farm since I'm under you? Uh, no. No, not at all. The farms the farms are solo players. You can scroll down on the farms tab, not pools, but farms, and the, the referral link will be there at the bottom. And I all think right, it's I, probably important to know that it's not uh, it, the the way they set up the animal farm. It's a little bit less uh, referral based than, than drip is you uh, with a lot of these daily ROI platforms. You really have to have some sort of incentive to bring people in to get some to, to build a community. Now that there's 120,000 people or so in the, in the drip community, most of those have bled over to the animal farm. It's not as necessary to have the same type of referral structure. So I believe you can get into the farms without any type of referral, whereas drip, you need a buddy code to be able to access the system. So they work a little bit different, but it's always nice if you've got a favorite, you know, YouTuber that feeds you content to use that. They do get a, you know, a small percentage on the garden or I guess on the farms as well. Ah, okay. yeah, sorry, yeah. Bad, yeah. yeah, you don't need a referral link. If people want to support you, they can. Scott's absolutely smack on right. I'm sorry I didn't um, enforce that. Solo players can just join the farm without the referral link, but it is a way of rewarding content creators or family members. So, yeah. Cheers, Scott. Now, do they, do they take – so let's say I'm earning $10. Do I now earn 9 and you get a dollar, or is it is it not like that? Um, no, the, the way it works – now. <clears throat> When we had the layer one, so Animal Farm was actually a layered project. So the first layer was layer one, it was called Manor Farm, and then we had our quote-unquote revolution, and Manor Farm became Animal Farm. Um, and with Manor Farm and Animal Farm V1, there was uh, – I never experienced it myself, but I did have some people tell me that they got an error – whenever they tried to stake um, assets on the farm. And then the only way they could clear up that error was actually by clicking on someone's <clears throat> referral link before they actually staked some assets on the farm. But to answer your question, I, I don't know if it's going to be like that on, on this um, second version of the animal farm, but I would guess it probably is. But to answer your question, if you stake nine dollars, does the, the the person whose link that you use do they get a dollar? No. So what happens is, if you stake non-core assets on the farm, you're going to be earning dogs, right? And w whenever you earn dogs, the the master chef contract is minting those tokens into existence that's how the rewards are paid so you'll come along every day and you'll click the harvest button and the contract will mint some tokens for you and those will go into your wallet 
At the same time, there is a secondary minting function that happens to pay the commission. So absolutely no, you, you don't pay the commission out of your rewards. The contract just mints those rewards as well. And I believe it's a 5% commission uh, for, you know, whoever whoever's link that you use when you originally staked those assets on the farm. All right, cool. I appreciate that. Brad, sorry, I totally hijacked your, uh, your, <laughs> your, your questions. No, no, that's good. Uh, my questions were, were kind of random and sporadic. You, you should see my notepad right now. I feel like that GIF with the, uh, the, the bulletin board with pictures everywhere and strings going all <laughs> over the place. That's what my notepad looks like at the moment here. Um, so I guess I had a question with respect to um, the price of pigs right now. So, you know, obviously when – when they came out, uh, the price spiked, and then we we saw a pause on the animal farm, and it slowly was going down, down, down. And here, as of recently, over the last month, um, been a big spike in the price. It's gone from, yeah, gosh, about seventy five dollars to a few days ago, got up to about a hundred and ninety. And over the last couple of days, it's settled back down. It got down to about 110 today. It's at about 121 now. Sorry, I'm throwing out a bunch of numbers at you. I'm just looking at the chart, kind of recapping the history here. But as far as the the recent price action, is that kind of a, a direct result of people positioning themselves, getting ready for the, the animal farm to get on pause so that they can put the pigs in the pig pen? Tell me a little bit about what you guys think about the recent price action and then also what you would maybe expect as we go forward or, or maybe not expect, but kind of what, what your inclinations are telling you. I'm really surprised to see it. I, I think there's a chance it's maybe one of those, uh, uh, maybe the price action that we're seeing over the last, whatever, 72 hours might be a little bit of buy the rumor, sell the news type mm -hmm. of a price action. Um, but it's, it's really surprising to me because, look, the, the primary use case for the pig's token is to stake it in the pig pen, right? And the way one of the cash flows for pig pen is these deposit and withdrawal fees. So every time, <clears throat> every time somebody stakes uh, non-core assets in the farms and pools, they have to pay either a 2% or a 3% uh, deposit fee. Okay. Those fees are converted to BUSD and 75% of that BUSD is paid to the pig pen. Um, so that's, that's one of your primary cash flows. And we're about to have an event, i.e. the animal farm is about to launch where there is going to be millions and millions of assets staked on the farm generating a truckload of fees those fees go to the pig pen so i don't know why somebody would want to be selling their pigs right now especially because if they had those pigs if they hang on to those pigs and kept them in the pig pen they're about to receive a huge payout there's going to be a huge flood of tvl and a bunch of deposit fees converted into BUSD and sent straight to the pig pen. So it's been kind of a surprise to me personally. Well, I appreciate that information because it kind of reinforces what my thought process was. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something or overlooking something. And I, I wasn't buying pigs as it was running up here over the last several weeks, but here over the last several days, um, yesterday, and in particular today, I was looking at doing some more DCA, but I, I started to do some buying as it's come down sizably from the recent highs that we saw. And I just wanted to make sure I'm not thinking about this the wrong way, because it seems to me that this is a, a, a great way to earn BUSD. And, and those that know me, I'm a BUSD whore. I, I love my BUSD rewards. So, <laughs> you know, th th it seems to me that with the sell-off that we've seen here recently, it potentially is providing an attractive entry point for folks like me that are a little bit newer to this. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything there. So I appreciate the, the context. Now... 
I mean, people people buy hype and they don't buy value. Right. So I, I, I would think my opinion is that anybody who's selling pigs, particularly right now, just, you know, moments essentially before we get this huge flood of, of income, um, they're not thinking about this in a long term way. And again, this is what Forex does. This is this is what inspires his designs is how can I get people to behave in their own best interest? Literally like people will shoot themselves in the foot. People will do short term speculative trading and they almost invariably get that wrong. They don't buy low and sell high. It's most likely the opposite, <laughs> you know? So uh, I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a mysterious uh, thing to me. I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll buy some more pigs. Oh, it's gone down. I guess I'll buy some more pigs. <laughs> yeah, I've been DCAing as well. I would say there's one plausible scenario here that I think maybe some of these uh, larger sales might be happening. So for the last couple of months, the only thing you've been able to accumulate is pigs. So if, if I was a whale and I continued to DCA and accumulate pigs and I had a really sizable position that I got at half this price, with, when everything spikes, if I want to diversify that position because I've now made money, why not sell a portion of my portfolio and then roll that into dogs to where I'm more balanced? So there may be a scenario where people are like, I've 2 x my investment. I need dogs because all I have is pigs because that's all that was available. And so they may be shifting that around the ecosystem of course, we're seeing that selling a couple of days before the actual launch because now other assets are available. So it may just be a diversification tool, like that money isn't necessarily leaving the e ecosystem. It's just moving around. So they could, you know, technically maybe move into the farms or the pools, uh, you know, stake their Ethereum or stake their BNB or be purchasing dogs. So that doesn't necessarily mean that all these people that are selling are short-term thinkers. They may be thinking, I just made a bunch of money on the come up. Let me make a shift and diversify a little bit into the other assets on the farm, dogs in particular, because we're now finally going live with them. Guys, is there a recommended place to buy pigs like Drip? We buy it on the swap or are we just doing that through Pancake Swap? Right on the, um, you want to buy pigs directly on the Animal Farm website. And there is another tab. It's just it's also called Swap, and that will allow you to purchase it through with uh, BUSD. Now, if you want to, you can purchase them on Pancake Swap if you'd like, uh, particularly if you've got another cryptocurrency you're exchanging them for. But if you've got BUSD, you just want to do it on the Swap tab of the Animal Farm page. And we can do that now. Yes. Thank you. Well, now I'm just buying pigs, Brad. So I'm hoping you can talk for a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've got it pulled up right now. I was just about to buy some more as well. <laughs> my computer's not connected to my like, wallet. It's really, it's really going AMA. On? I'm going to buy pigs. <laughs> I I, I, another one while you guys were talking, so I'm with you. <laughs> I would I would echo what Scott just said. Um, I I'm extremely excited about the dogs token because it has some really interesting tokenomics. That 90% tax is going to be very interesting to see what – because it, theoretically, you got a 90% tax on a token. You're, you're not going to see any sell pressure whatsoever. But I think, nonetheless, we will probably see some selling on day one, minute one. And I'm just, like, chomping at the bit because I'm going to have my dogs in the dog pound – and all of that tax revenue is going to be coming to me as a staker in the dog pound and as a staker. That's another source of income, by the way, for the pig pen. So, um, by the way, the 90% tax sounds insane, and it is insane at first. Um, but that's another part of the incentive is that instead of selling these hot potato reward tokens that you're earning – no, you're going to stake them and you're going to accumulate more of them and you're going to put those in the dog pound and begin to earn a passive income off of your income producing assets. Um, but you, you can and you will reduce your tax over time. So the more loyal you are to the platform in the, in the pig pen, in the dog pound, um, you reduce your tax by 2% every month just by 
being a part of the uh, platform. And then if you stake your dogs in dog pound, you can reduce your tax by up to 1% every day. So in a matter of two months, you're already down to like, what, 30%, 28%, 26% um, tax. And that's, uh, that's a lot better than 90%. But it's going to be very interesting to see what the price action, how it plays out, and to see, like, how much B&B are we all getting paid in a passive way just sitting there in the, uh, in the dog pound. Hopefully you guys are noticing a theme here, too. Fork Shark is intentionally, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, making poor behavior – uh, detrimental to your income and good behavior, very positive for your income. So you, if you've got good behaviors over in, in the drip network and you're taking your money that you're making and reinvesting it to make more money, it's positive for you. If you go the other way, you obviously make less money. And in this case, if you purchase assets that are income bearing assets, so they're making you passive income and you continue to wait, continue to accumulate those instead of just sell them and take the short term gain, it's better for you long term. So everything is based around this, sort of uh, gamification, loyalty score, everything. Make the right moves like a rich person would make, smart investment decisions, and over the term, you'll make a lot more money, and you'll still hold those assets, so it will make you money forever as long as this stuff is open. Instead of just being super excited, taking just a one, sh one short-term uh, come up and a capital gain, and then you have nothing left like most people do. 80% of uh, lottery winners go broke within five years. It doesn't matter whether you want $100,000 or $20 million. And it's because they don't have – they haven't trained themselves to make good financial decisions. So every aspect of the entire ecosystem trains you to make good long-term wealth decisions. And, and those obviously um, come in the form of assets that you don't sell that earn you passive income. Very well said. And just to recap, the pigs – we cannot put them in the pig pen until the animal farm resumes resumes tomorrow, correct? No, sir. You can do that right now. Oh, we can? Yeah. Oh, yep. The, okay. the only issue is, and so I've had pigs in the, in the pig pen for quite a while. The only issue is since there's very little transactions happening on the animal farm because it's because 99% of it's closed, you earn basically no yield. So I still make... 50 cents a day right now from the, the pigs that I have staked in there, but there's basically no activity happening on the exchange. But as soon as activity starts to happen, those, those uh, rewards go up significantly. So you can certainly stake them in there. The only reason it's not paying out a lot and there's not a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, hype behind it is because once the animal farm opens, that's where the actual income is generated. So we, we, we want to stake them tonight, essentially. I was going to say, Todd, you're thinking yeah. the exact same thing as me, yeah. and I wanted to ask that question, too, because I, I want to get them in the pig pen before before things go live tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have, like I was saying earlier, we're going to have a massive wave of staking that's going to happen, Bunch of bunch of LP and single assets that are going to be staked on the farm and all of the associated deposit fees. And I mentioned that 75%, right? The other 25%, by the way, of all those deposit and withdrawal fees, um, that other 25% of that money is going to buy the dog's token and pair it with BUSD and add locked liquidity. So that's that benefits uh, users of the platform as well. So this is a platform that is truly owned by the community, by all the users, and benefits all of the users. The, de the dev fee works out to be, um, I think Forex said it's like less than 0.7% of those fees is actually ended up going to the developers, which is a tiny, tiny dev fee, especially, you know, in, <laughs> in the world of DeFi. Uh, not only do you have dev fees that are way pricier than that, but you also have all kinds of uh, exploits and rugs and everything else going on. And that's another thing that we should mention as well is that Forex has a tremendous track record. It's been in crypto since 2012. Uh, the flagship product, at least so far, is, of course, Drip Network. That has been around since uh, uh, April 22nd, 2021. So we're coming up on, what, 18 months almost of perfect 
flawless operation. Those smart contracts are there. They're doing exactly what they were programmed to do, paying out uh, lots and lots of ROI to all the users of Faucet. And it hasn't gone down. It hasn't been rugged. It hasn't been exploited. Nobody ran off with the money. Uh, you know, the drip token price, yeah, that's been crazy volatile. It's been as high as 200 bucks. It's been as low as $2 in May of last year. So that being said, it, it's running perfectly. And so, you know, DeFi in particular, you have to be worried about exploits here and rug pulls there and, and shady devs that are, you know, just out for themselves. And Forex is completely 100% different from that. In addition to, like Scott said, training us all to make savvy investment and wealth building decisions. Brandon, could I just nudge you in a, a direction that you could explain better than me? Um, sure. Regarding the, the, the pig pen and, and, and Forex and the team, obviously the, the founder contract, um, could, we, could we maybe just do a couple of minutes on that, which is, I think is important for the, you know, the, oh, the debt yeah. fees? I also, I wanted to hash that out a little bit more too as far as the deposit and withdrawal fees. I said 25% goes to buying uh, dogs and adding dogs BUSD liquidity. The other 75%, like I said earlier, goes to the pig pen. But it goes to pig pen in a special sort of a way. So 30% of that money that's going to the pig pen is an instant payout. So if there's a million dollars in fees... 300,000 of that is going to instant payouts in the pig pen. That's why I'm so surprised that people are selling pigs and not staking them as much as they can and holding on to as many as they can and having it in the pig pen because there's going to be a huge wave of TBL and all the associated deposit fees, and 30% of that cash flow is going to be instantly paid out to people in the pig pen. Gone, you know, if you're not there, you don't get it. <laughs> that's, that's how an instant payout works. The other 70% of that, 75%, right? 25% goes to buying dogs and adding liquidity. 75% goes to pig pen. 30% of the 75% is instant payout. The other 70% of that 75% goes to the uh, rewards vault. And so that rewards vault just holds a crap ton of BUSD. <clears throat> and what the contract does is it pays out 3% of the balance of that vault every day to the pig pen. So every day you'll have your little reward center there and you'll see how much BUSD you earned as a pig pen staker. And you'll see also you earn pigs that are coming from deposit and withdrawal fees on the piggy bank. But that's, I digress. Um, so with respect to the dev or founder, um, Founders contract, what that does is <clears throat> designates 10% of the pig pen is owned by that contract. Now, people like you and me, we can stake pigs. And somebody asked the question earlier, is that, is that a permanent stake? No. Uh, and I think Scott provided the correct answer there too, is when you stake pigs in the pig pen, um, you can withdraw that if you want to, but you can't withdraw it all at once. It's vested. So you can only withdraw 2% of it per day if for some reason you wanted to go ahead and withdraw your pigs. I personally want to keep adding to my pig pen, but that option is available. If you want to withdraw, you can withdraw 2% per day. That's Thanks. for that's for regular users. For the founder contract their position cannot be withdrawn they only get the busd rewards associated with that position in the pig pen so the founder contract owns 10 percent of the pig pen but can never withdraw those pigs uh all it can do all the founders essentially can do is just withdraw their passive income i.e busd so that's why it's like 75% of the fees, and then they get 10% of that. And so it's, I guess it's 0.75%. I don't know, but that, that's how the founder's contract works. It's really bullish because, first of all, the fees are very low. 
compared to other devs and other projects. And secondly, they can't withdraw the principal. They can only withdraw the interest. They can only withdraw the BUSD. And by the way, if their position becomes larger than 10%, the contract automatically withdraws the extra pigs and burns them. So if, if, if the pig pen shrinks because people are withdrawing and suddenly the founder's position is more than 10%, boom, you're going to have some deflation in the pig's token. Wow, that's interesting. And, and circling back to what you said, and Scott had touched upon this as well, the 2% per day, when it, it, the withdrawal limit on the pigs, does that build up every day? So let's say I wanted to pull out 10% of what I've got staked. Would I have to do 2% per day over a total of five different days? Or does that build up after two days, I can withdraw 4% after three days, six, et cetera? Or is it strictly 2% per day? It, it builds up. It builds up over the day. So if you look at, I don't know if you guys are messing around on the site. If you look at the pig pen section uh -huh. that says uh, deposit pigs and one that says withdraw your staked pigs, it says right on there your withdrawal limit is 2% per day. And right under that, under the section that says withdraw your staked pigs, it shows you the available pigs to withdraw. So for me, I've got about a half a pig that I can withdraw. And, of course, I'm just going to continue to compound that back in. But it will build up over time. So, you know, after five days, you're taking off that, that full amount. Perfect. And you actually were just describing what I was staring at right exactly. now. Yep. And, and while I was looking at this, that's kind of the way I interpreted it. But I just wanted to make sure that that was correct. So thank you for, for sure. that. And the button you want to be most concerned of, concerned with, and I know – you're going to want to build your pig pen position is on the left hand side where it says deposit pigs at the bottom it says compound pigs claim busd that just handles two transactions for you it claims the dollars that you've earned and takes those pigs that are available and that you've earned and puts them back into the um, into your staked balance so you're you're continually growing that as well so that's that's what you'll want to hit, and you want to do that at the appropriate time. It depends on how many pigs you have in there and how much you're earning. Obviously, you don't want to do it 10 times a day because the gas fees are going to outweigh what you're earning. But um, you know, right now, I would say I'd do it maybe once a week or something. But as the uh, animal farm reopens and there's a lot of transactions in there, it will make sense to do it a little more often. But you'll see that as you start to accumulate a balance in that pig section and you're getting paid, there'll be an appropriate dollar amount for you that you'll want to cycle that back in, or you can, of course, take those profits out. So, Awesome. And you jumped right to speaking my language there with compounding the pigs and claiming the BUSD. Like I said, I'm a BUSD whore. Bring uh, on the BUSD. <laughs> well, this, Compound honestly, rest. it's genius. Uh, it's it, it couldn't be much easier for me because I really, uh, the Binance Smart Chain for me, I've done a lot of different stuff on different chains, and I've just always had the most success here. It's the easiest. It doesn't really go down except for, you know, once in, in a blue moon, and that's very temporary, so it's uh, very secure. And if, if honestly, it's I see Binance similar to where I see Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. If it goes away, then we've got a lot bigger problems than our, you know, daily ROI protocol. So I think it's extremely stable. And if I can get two things out of the animal farm, which is BUSD and BNB, I'll be a happy man. Absolutely. All right. I'm just going to test this out here. I'm depositing some pigs right now. I just wanted to say, I, I was listening to the travel ad interview with, uh, uh, the gentleman for Arc shark yesterday and the co-host said something about this is a very complex thing to explain to people and you got to figure out a way to kind of he didn't say this i'm saying this dumb it down but i think he already did that in the way that they have the invite link because it takes people holding someone's hand to walk them through it and I just think that's brilliant. I, I, I think that was a very smart thing that he did. And I love that because like Lee did with me, took me by the hand. And now I do that with everybody else that I've been brought into this, taken by the hand. And I just think that's great. And it also builds community, which, which is important for a crypto project. So I, I, I'm just super impressed with all of these little things that uh, he has chosen to do with this project. 
Yeah, I think we spoke the forex. The way, sorry, Brandon. The way that the, the way that I um, got into this ecosystem was watching. In fact, the two gents that I'm proud and honoured to know and speak with every day, Brandon and Scott, and many, many others. I was watching their content and thought, oh, this is too difficult. And that's why I procrastinated so long and lost a lot of money by doing that. Now, when it comes to Forex Shark, he, the way he talks can come across as a bit overwhelming to people outside of the ecosystem. But when you've got someone who is so passionate about earning money for the investors that invest in his protocols, the way he protects our capital, I took the time to learn and, and I needed some hand holding when I, when I first got in. And, and the, way that the, the way that I see it is like me and you, Todd, we were back and forth for hours and hours and hours. I did private videos, we did um, TG voice messages and all that. It got me to learn. I'm, I'm not very good with, <clears throat> um, with education, which is why I kind of let the, the lads take over a little bit because I see things for what they are. And if someone needs help, I will do everything. And if I can't help, I'll, I'll tap into someone else's knowledge. But this ecosystem has made me learn. Now, I was poor at school, but this ecosystem has, has allowed me, like, it's. I've got a new skill, if that makes sense, and it's a skill and a passion that I'm, I'm learning every day. I'm, I'm even listening to these lads speak and thinking, oh, yeah, of course, that's a good point. But the way that Forex has built it does tap into... Not just let's ape in and make 100 grand on a pump and dump. It's not about that. And the more you learn about this ecosystem and the more you get the mentality of um, delayed gratification, which is one of the, the terms I learned, as soon as you get it and you disassociate price from value, you're going to make some decent money. Now, none of us are financial advisors, of course. However... I am making more money now doing this than I could if I worked 16 hours a day working my my balls off at work. And I think once we get that across to more people and they learn about it, the better for all of us because the way that this ecosystem is built is just simply incredible. It just is. And yes, I am a maxi, but if you, you lads listen, look, learn, it's it's just insane. And you don't, I have, would to, say, you don't, I, you don't have to become a, a YouTube star to do this right you you can no 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 exactly you know, so that's not part of it so what we're talking about here is the learning curve right there and there is a significant steep learning curve to get into DeFi. but i would say a couple of things about that first of all drip is essentially the only team-based crypto in crypto and it's team-based because of the referral reward system. So it's in everybody's best interest. If they have a faucet account, they, they want to get other people on their team. And so naturally, they're going to help people face that learning curve, right? And they're also, by the way, going to be airdropping to their team. Quite often, you know, people are airdropping – hundreds of drip every week. Um, there was a point where there was like millions of dollars going out every month just in airdrops alone. So you have this, this team-based environment with drip that, that is unmatched anywhere in crypto, and that helps people to face this steep learning curve. Another thing I would say is that... Um, I mean, first of all, that's that's the whole reason for my channel. I am, you know, I'm an educator. I have 25 years experience as a technical support engineer, master's degree from Stanford, all the rest of it. And I freaking love to stream on YouTube three times a week and help people with all these complexities, help them to understand DeFi. And the last thing I would say about that is that... <clears throat> The reason this is such a tremendous opportunity is because this is really just an infantile, tiny, tiny market. And the reason it's such a tiny market is because there is that learning curve. So that just means that there's not a lot of people into it right now, which means it's a tremendous opportunity because as it becomes easier, as people become educated and it's 
super easy to get educated on this stuff. You just t spend some time and you get on my channel, you get on Scott's channel or Lee's channel and you just take the time and you learn it. But then more people learn it and then more people tell p their friends about drip and animal farm and it just spreads like wildfire and you go from like Bitcoin did, you go from a handful, relatively a handful of people to millions and millions of people. And so the, 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 <laughs> the growth potential here is just astounding. And it, not only that, that's just crypto and DeFi in general. But then when you look at specifically the products that we have, that Forex Shark has developed, oh my God, this, this ecosystem is just going to absolutely explode. In my opinion, I don't have a crystal ball, but knowing what I know about DeFi and tokenomics and the way all these systems are designed, man, this thing is going to be absolutely ginormous. And I think if people, when people are getting started, that's what they need to realize. Like, people are going to look at this and go, wow, all of that sounds too good to be true. And the fact is, is the people that are here, the friends of the people that even know about crypto and it's a fraction of people that are in the general finance. I mean, there's a very small percentage of the world population that owns any Bitcoin and has purchased any cryptocurrency. And 80 to 90% of those guys have bought it in the last few years because it seemed like the good thing to buy because everything was appreciating. There's 10% of folks that actually kind of understand uh, some of the utility and use case. A very, very, very small percentage the people currently in crypto are in DeFi or even have even heard of it. So the reason that the potential is so great is because nobody's in it. Imagine you're buying Bitcoin 10 years ago. There was no Coinbase where you could just jump on and, and uh, you know, and put in a debit card and purchase it. You had to jump through a bunch of hurdles and you had to be kind of an insider tech guy to be able to do that. This is really a very similar concept that people actually have to go through that learning curve, watch several hours of a video, figure out how to set up a MetaMask wallet, figure out what different, you know, chains, the different cryptocurrencies speak different languages, which one operates on which one. So there's some research to be done there and it's confusing to people. And that barrier to entry is part of why the potential gains are so high. That's like that's the same thing with basically everything. If you're on the beginning of a bell curve and you're an early adopter and that uh, sector hits, you make millions of dollars usually historically. So it, it's no different here. You're you're jumping through a lot of hurdles that people down the road will not have to do of uh, purchasing cryptocurrency on a centralized exchange and then transferring it to a MetaMask wallet. And maybe you have to bridge it because you bought it on the wrong network. There's a lot of steps there that are um, that are a bit of a heartache. And so a lot of folks, when I was setting them up originally, would be like, man, this sounds too good to be true. I'm like, you wait until we spend the next three hours together getting you set up and then finally at the end they're like okay i understand that was you know a lot of different steps and i'm still my mind's spinning i feel like i'm drinking through a fire hose so that barrier to entry is what causes the, you know the, the potential so down the road 10 years from now decentralized finance will have merged with centralized finance and it will be you know it, it will be in, indistinguishable from each other and the yields will balance out you i do i think that in in 10 years you won't see the same returns that you can get right now because it will be so commoditized. Everyone will be doing it and everyone will have access and it'll be two clicks of a button for you to um, KYC yourself and then own, you know, own one of these cryptocurrencies on a platform. So for the people getting started, I realize it's complicated. If it wasn't complicated, everybody would be doing it. And if everybody was doing it, the market would be saturated. And that means all those dollars that are out there would be going to a lot more people instead of the few of us who want to, uh, you know, take some uh, calculated risk and actually go through the steps and then utilize these protocols when they're first coming out and be early adopters. Yeah, well said, guys. I, I was going to ask, but you kind of both did it. Uh, sort of wrap up what your final thoughts are and, and both of you did it. So Lee, I'd like to uh, get kind of your final thoughts and then, and then we'll, I'll circle back to both Brandon and Scott, just cause they didn't know they were doing final thoughts, but Lee, what, what are your final thoughts uh, you want to share with people? Yeah, basically, Mark, it kind of echoes what the lads have been saying, really. My final thoughts are, I've just tagged you in a post on Twitter, by the way, um, where people say that sometimes some things are too good to be true. And I do, I do subscribe to that in the main. But since I've, I've been introduced to this ecosystem, starting with Drip, 
Um, and I do like to add a little bit of in real life um, comparisons. So, you know, you've got some people who have got much bigger um, drip bags than me. I'm doing okay in it. Um, and I could claim and sell $1,000 tonight for a couple of days of clicking zero buttons. So, right. The way that I wanted to debank myself from the system, because I'm kind of interested in doing that, is by finding something that was going to pay me passively. This ecosystem does that. And now I'm looking at retirement plans. As you probably heard, Brandon um, has retired from his day job because of the drip ecosystem. And I think that in the future, when people look, you know, we've all had opportunities maybe to look at Bitcoin in the past, but I would have, I would have sold if I made 10x probably because I'm a paper hand in terms of back then. Because if I needed cash quick, I could have done it. But now with the drip ecosystem, my delayed gratification has learned and taught me to be a bit more patient, be a better investor, listening and learning. And the way to get myself out of the nine to five is by earning my 1% a day in the faucet. And it's by staking my assets into the animal farm and not having to sell my native assets. Because we all, we've all been involved in white lists and pre-sales in the past. And to realise your gains, you have to sell on a green candle that exceeds when you bought. It's, you, know, you, you buy, you sell as a profit. But with this ecosystem and the way that it's allowed me to stake my money smartly and wait, I just think it's so, so much more powerful than what I was doing before. And the fact that we are so, so very early. I'm a complete noob to this, if you, if you think about it. I, I joined in February. And I've had some success on YouTube, which is fantastic. Um, you know, I'm loving doing that. And what Drip has done for me is I did have a small channel. You know me from Tipto Crypto back in the day. I say back in the day, it's 12 months, but crypto moves fast. But now the Drip Network has allowed me to meet hundreds, if not thousands of investors. The community is like nothing I've ever seen before in real life or in crypto. And... It's given me a new lease of life at 42 years of age to be smarter, educate myself better, learn from some of the most wise people I've ever met in crypto. And I'm, I'm on you know, Twitter spaces with how many of you? Five of you. And I think the fact that it's allowed me to do that. And even my wife says, how can you be so passionate about something that doesn't exist? And she's a non-investor, you see, until she sees a diamond that Lee buys her with the money he's earned from Drip and the Animal Farm. And I think that the way that I have learned to educate myself, I can't thank all of these people enough for doing it. And it does sound cultish, and people do call us a cult, but there's 130,000 of us, and there's many more on the sidelines. And the fact that we are so early tells me that I've made the right decision, and I'm proud to be in so early. And I can't put it so eloquently as the other lads. As, just, as I've told you, I'm not, you know, I'm not the cleverest bloke in the world, but I am probably one of the most clever because i've invested in this ecosystem so thank you <laughs> we love you lee yeah and, and don't discount you. yourself don't discount yourself lee because you're the one that that taught me this stuff and brought me in and you did an amazing job so i have got a lot of respect for what you you're doing and the person that you're becoming because it's not easy to come out and talk and put yourself out there so well done and and i i, I could listen to you guys all night long um brandon we can talk all night long <laughs> I, of course you can uh, i'm, I'm you going on seven hours today um but your, uh yeah your final thoughts yeah 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 absolutely i was thinking about that so i'm i'm grateful that uh, lee got to go first on that and i get to go second so i would say in this business or or this space crypto DeFi, you're, you're gonna run into two objections one is it's too good to be true and the other is it's too complicated it's too difficult so as far as it's too good to be true like everybody grew up and their mommies and daddies told them that there's no such thing as a free lunch and money doesn't grow on trees and there's no such thing as free money well, I'm here to tell you there is such a thing as free money. And with cryptocurrency, that's where it's at. Bitcoin went 
from a penny to $69,000. Like I said before, that was an opportunity to change a dollar into $6.9 million. That actually happened. So cryptocurrency is one of these weird things where the rising tide truly lifts all boats. You get this wave, this almost constant wave of user adoption with, yeah, a lot of volatile bumps up and down along the way. But in general, you get a transfer of wealth out of these. And by the way, I could talk for hours about the corrupted, scamalicious, debt-based fiat currency system, uh, but I won't digress. But it, this is a transfer of wealth out of a corrupted central bank debt-based currency system into a form of hard money that is better, literally better for humankind. And it's, it, it, it's a process where capital is constantly moving out of fiat and into crypto, and it actually is a place where everybody can win. All you have to do is find a good crypto and hang on for the ride. Hodl, hold on for dear life, right? And there is such a thing as free money. Welcome to DeFi. Welcome to crypto. Definitely the right place to be. Uh, and, and, and it can happen really quickly. And everybody here has changed their lives thanks to this ecosystem. Now, as far as it being too complicated, this is another beautiful thing about this particular ecosystem, and especially with the Drip uh, network. This is team-based. So it is a mute, mutually beneficial situation where I'm the one with all the knowledge and you're the newbie. And I'm going to literally take you hand in hand and guide you through this process. So you have real people that can meet with you. In my Telegram group, I have 20 admins plus myself. So we're in there pretty much 24-7. You can join the Telegram group, ask your questions. You're going to get a well uh, you know, a well thought out, knowledgeable answer, and you're going to get, you know, personalized one on one assistance to help you through this process. Why would anybody do that? Because we're all benefiting. You join Team Drip Guide, we get referral rewards. You join Team Drip Guide, you get help to go through this process and learn how to do this this difficult learning curve. So those right there are the main objections, and 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 you can see. We can overcome those, and it's really worth it. It's worth it spending the time and the energy to actually learn something. Like, there's something that Mike Maloney always says is that the most important investment that you can make is in your education, and in particular, your financial education. And that they don't teach that in schools too much. You know, like, like we were talking about earlier, the, 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 the way to make wise investment and wealth-building decisions. That's right here. So... That's what I would say. I, I do want to say before I let Scott have the last word, uh, Lee, if you guys do have a get together in America, uh, Brad and I definitely want to be there for that. Yeah, DripCon's happening, mate. We're doing it 100%. Yep. Yep. Count me in. Yep, we'll be there. All right, Scott, your uh, final words. All right. Well, those guys' answers were brilliant. And Brandon talked about Mike Maloney, Central Bank System. You're, uh, you're speaking my language. We could go super deep on that. But that's kind of what always attracted me to crypto anyway. And I think we're at the precipice of something great. But I'll finish with a, a different angle here because I think, I think a lot of folks are going to be thinking, okay, how do I get in and what do I do? Am I going to Animal Farm or am I going into Drip? So they're really two separate um, but cohesive ideologies. I would say Drip, uh, Drip in the Drip faucet is the wealth builder. If you only have a smaller amount of capital and you're willing to deposit and keep compounding that over time, that can help grow you a, a a uh, certain amount of, you know, a good amount of investment capital that you can then leverage in other parts of the ecosystem. So for the drip strategy, it's, you know, it's, it's very easy. Brandon it does his live streams three times a week and, and breaks down everything. There's a bunch of videos out there that Lee has done that I've done to help you kind of get set up, but that's fairly easy to understand. <clears throat> you deposit money 
And then every day you decide whether you want to take the money out or compound it and grow it. And the ideal way for hopefully most of us are thinking, I want to use my money to make more money. Mm -hmm. So that's the full drip strategy. That's how you should think of it. Deposit money, keep compounding it. It will grow my wealth. And then I have a decision to make of what I want to do with that wealth. <clears throat> for the animal farm, there's several different ways you could play it. But to make it just as simple as possible, if you have a little bit larger amount of capital and you want to park that capital somewhere and earn interest off of it or a dividend payment without ever having to sell the underlying asset, very similar to what you would do with real estate, then the animal farm is very easy. You put it in dogs, you put it in pigs, and then you sit back and let those dividends come to you. And when you get those dividends, you will have the opportunity to either cash them out or reinvest them and grow it. So drip, of course, is going to be, um, it's, it's a little bit more on the higher end of risk, but your reward is substantially higher. You're earning a, a tremendous percentage. Animal farm and, and those mechanisms, those, um, those pools, I guess, you've got, of course, the pig pen and then also the dog pound. Those are a little bit lower risk, but they're also lower yield. So it's just a balance between the two. If you decide that you've got a small amount of capital and you're okay to jump in there every day and cycle it, <clears throat> drip is a good idea for you. If you've got a larger amount of capital and you want a set it and forget it income stream, then consider the animal farm. And then if you want to do both, of course, then there's a, uh, you can do both and there's plenty of other plays in the ecosystem. But I would say start out by not overwhelming yourself and think, hey, there's 15 different plays here. Do I want to do the cake LP tokens and stake them to earn this or that? Just keep it very simple. Make one move at a time. The animal farm's not going anywhere. The drip faucet's not going anywhere. The drip faucet's been around for 18 months, which, which is the longest lasting ROI protocol in, on the planet. And in terms for those who don't know in DeFi years that's it's like dog years it's like seven years <clears throat> so it's very stable it's been around of course there's price fluctuation but as far as the protocol doing exactly what it's designed to do it's flawless and it's never it's never been down it's never needed to be changed so i would say keep it simple make the decision of which platform you'd like to go into first learn a little bit about it, and then step-by-step step add to those positions over time. These aren't going anywhere. This is just your opportunity to buy some of these assets at a very discounted rate. When people uh, invest in things, they're generally investing on the hype. Just like in, in 2009, 2008, 2009, when the, when the uh, real estate market crashed, everyone, 99% of people said, oh, I'm staying far away from real estate. Who would touch real estate right now? Smart money said, perfect time to buy. So when, you're, when you've got undervalued assets like, like they are right now, this is the perfect time to accumulate. And then when assets take that swing and they're overvalued, then of course you can sell them off. But in this case, in the case of uh, the animal farm, of course, hang on to those assets or the yield. And in the case of drip, that's where you make your money. You get price appreciation, then you can take that capital. Now that you have your, your person who actually has money to invest and you can figure out how you want to invest it. And of course, the smart play is to invest in other sections of the ecosystem. Guys, I just want to say this has been one of my favorite AMAs I've ever done. And you guys really impressed me. And I, I realize why I, you know, you're so successful because you're really, really good at what you do. Um, and I really appreciate this. Brad and I were talking earlier today and and we were both kind of like, you know, we just want this for us. Like, we just want this masterclass for us so we know what the hell we're doing. So we, <laughs> we, we, we both appreciate you uh, coming on here doing this. I want to remind people I'm going to retweet out the recording. Um, I'm going to let it stay out there for a week where people can comment on it. And then Brad and I will pick two people that we're going to give $100 in drip tokens to. Uh, but you got to be following me. you got to be following DeFi Connection, who's right there at the top. So follow us now. Comment on the tweet once I put it out there, and we'll pick the winners next week, and we'll get you set I'll match that 100 as well, Todd. Oh, you're going to do that as well? Yeah, I'll match it, yeah. Yeah. One, all right, so oh, we yeah. Got... It's, a, it's just an airdrop. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll match it, too. All right. I might as well join the club. <laughs> All right. Say, you're <laughs> <five> <laughs> <there>. Here we <laughs> go. You guys tell me who wins, and we'll uh, we'll hook them up. So if it's different people or yep. – yeah, uh, yep, let's hook them up. All right, guys. So we, we have five $100 in drip tokens, and we'll pick those next week. And then I'll work with you guys to get that information to you for the different winners. Uh, but, yeah, no, this is great. So we should definitely share this space. Come back to it a couple of times because – I have to go back and rewatch what Lee sent me a couple of times, and then I'd ask him a question. I'd go back and watch it again. 
And as it started to sink in, I just see the value and I, I'm really excited. Uh, I, I just, Brad, I might shut it all down and just become a drip YouTuber now. That's it. I'm <laughs> shutting it all down. <laughs> but listen, listen, just, just an added point. The, and I, I know we stretch for time, so I'll keep it 30 seconds or less. When it comes to drip community, the word community is what matters, right? And the only reason I am now in a position to be able to say, I'll match it, and sorry for, for dragging you two into it as well, but it's because of drip. And I, it gives me this opportunity to say, yeah, I'll match it. Because we are making money, even in a bear market. We're forgetting where we are at the moment. And this, this ecosystem has allowed me to now be able to say, that's what we're going to do. And we are such a family until you realize, you know, you've, you've, you know, you know, we've seen people tweet about it. This community is awesome. And I want to thank everyone that's listened in who's not part of the community. And I hope you will be soon. But we are a family and anyone needs anything. DMs are always open on Telegram, all right? So I love you all and thanks very much. Yeah, I appreciate that. I really do. Guys, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Uh, again, we're giving away five $100 drips. So comment. I'm going to tweet this recording out and I will tell you in that tweet, comment below and we'll pick winners next week and uh, I'll reach out to all the winners and I'll connect you guys to them. Absolutely a, a pleasure for me to be here. I love talking about this stuff. So thanks for hosting this. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely yeah. a joy for me. My pleasure. I agree. Absolute pleasure, guys. Well, and I just wanted to say thank you to, to the three of you as well. This has been incredibly helpful for me personally. Like Todd said, you know, we talked about this ahead of time. I just wanted to do this for my own benefit and obviously everybody else that was listening. But, but I was being selfish on this one, and I just wanted to learn as much as I could. And that's why my notepad is, is a mess at the moment. But thank you guys so much for, for all the information you've given us. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to do this. Um, if you guys ever want to do this again down the road, I think Todd would probably echo yes. the sentiment as well. I, yes. I'd love to do this again down the road as well, get some additional people to listen in and, and just help educate people on this. Absolutely. I'd be happy to join again. Awesome. Yep. Same. All right, gentlemen. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you all for tuning in. And remember to comment on the tweet that I put out. And uh, we're giving away five $100 in drip tokens. So definitely take advantage of that. All right, everybody, have a great night, and uh, we'll see that farm open tomorrow, and uh, Brad and I are going to be pumping a lot of money into that thing. Good luck, guys. Take it easy, man. All right, cheers, guys. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Good night.